Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'd like to welcome you to today's roundtable on Euro risk free rates. My name is Cornelia Holthausen. I'm Deputy Director General here at the DG Market Operations at the ECB, and I will moderate uh, today's event for you. The purpose of this meeting is to provide you and generally a big audience with more insights into the various work streams that are ongoing in relation to interest rate benchmark reform in Europe. So while the working group on risk-free rates is uh, composed of private sector participants and chaired by the private sector chair, um, the ECB is also very engaged in this process. So we are not only observers in this group, but we also provide the secretariat. And in this function, we invited you to come here to the ECB today. We will have an interesting list of speakers throughout the day that will provide you with a lot of information on the deliberations of the working group, the current state of play as regards existing benchmarks and those that are to come, the regulatory reform, yeah, and in particular the new ECB interest rate, ESTER, and other related issues. So let me start by introducing the first um, group of high-level speakers. So with the ECB being the host of this event, I'm very happy that Benoit Curé, member of our executive board, um, was able to give the opening remarks today. And his remarks will be followed by an introduction by Mr. Stephen van Rijkswijk, um, who is um, um, the chairman of the working group on risk-free rates and apart from that, member of the board and uh, chief risk officer at ING Bank. And then following that, uh, Tilman Luder, head of unit in uh, the European Commission's DG FISMA, will give some introductory remarks on the state of play as regards legislation. So without further ado, Benoit, could you take the floor? Thank you very much, Cornelia. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the ECB. And welcome to this roundtable on uh, Euro risk free rates. Uh, there is no need to recall the urgency of what's at stake here. Trillions worth of financial contracts uh, depend on benchmarks. This means that we need to find solutions, and soon, uh, that can ensure the stability of the financial system. The working group on Euro risk free rates has done hard work so far in that direction. And going forward, uh, I see three areas that require our attention, and we'll listen very carefully to what all uh, panel participants have to say about these three uh, dimensions. Mm -hmm. The first area is a transition towards ESTER. Uh, as you are well aware, ESTER, so Euro short term rate, um, is, a, is an unsecured overnight borrowing rate to be produced by the ECB on a daily basis. It is calculated from data which is available to the ECB from its uh, statistical money market collection, so the so-called MMSR data from the money market uh, statistical regulation. The working group on euro risk-free rates uh, unanimously recommended ESTER as a new euro risk-free rate uh, to replace AONIA. Uh, the ECB welcomes uh, the recommendations of the working group. ESTER is a reliable and robust rate. Uh, it reflects financing conditions in the money markets better than secured rates, which could be influenced by regulatory and collateral factors unrelated to bank borrowing. Developing ESTER within a tight time frame means that there is a trade-off involved. The better market participants are prepared for and understand the properties of ESTER, the faster the transition to a liquid market is likely to be. I can therefore understand the arguments of those pushing us for a speedy release of the new rate uh, in 2019. But too fast a publication might entail operational risks. A sufficient period of testing is required to make sure that the technical setup achieves the highest degree of reliability to guarantee the smooth production of ESTER. Robust business continuity and contingency plans must be uh, developed. So we have therefore communicated that we will publish ESTER by October 2019, at the latest. Uh, in other words, uh, we aim at releasing ESTER as early as possible, but only once uh, we are confident that it meets our requirements regarding reliability and robustness. So you, you will learn more in 2019 about the, uh, the final timeline. Uh, it will have to reflect the trade-off I've just uh, described. I won't elaborate much further on Esther, as uh, later today you will hear more from different speakers. But 
allow me to point out that uh, with the recommendation of uh, Esther as a Euro retry rate, uh, the work has only just started. It is now up to the working group on uh, Euro retry rates to put forward a transition plan uh, for the replacement of uh, Aonia. Time in short is short uh, in view of the timeline prescribed by the uh, EU benchmark regulation. And I say this also being aware of the industry recommendation towards the co-legislators for extension of this timeline. And I'm pretty sure that this will be further discussed today. Second area of focus is the reform of Euribor. While Esther uh, represents an alternative benchmark for the short-term segment of the money market, uh, progress towards the development of alternatives for longer tenors is yet to be seen. I see this as a key area for the working group. For Euribor, work is currently ongoing under the auspices of the uh, European Money Market Institute, the EMMI, which will hopefully result in a new compliant benchmark uh, based on a hybrid methodology, using actual transactions whenever available and uh, relying on other related market prices when required. Uh, that's clearly encouraging, uh, but it's important that the working group continues to work on the construction of credible rates as uh, fallback rates uh, for Euribor, so that there are safeguards for the smooth functioning of the financial markets. Which uh, leads me to the third area of focus, which is contracts robustness. The working group needs to elaborate on credible proposals for how financial contracts can be made robust, including uh, through the elaboration of uh, workable fallback provisions, addressing the discontinuation of existing reference rates. Uh, let me conclude by saying how important uh, it is that the private sector builds on the current momentum uh, and that awareness and initiative is spread across an even broader base of market participants, uh, which is in the essence of what we're doing today also, uh, to, uh, to raise the level of awareness uh, throughout uh, the marketplace. There are many steps that can be taken by each market participant uh, already now, for example, to increase internal awareness of the risks and related exposures, to start preparations, for example, by an inventory of the financial products impacted uh, in your organization, uh, or a review of the stock of contracts, the incorporation of fallbacks, uh, or the evaluation of the impact of benchmark discontinuation. And also to communicate actively vis-a-vis -vis clients and to participate in different relevant fora, working groups, roundtables, etc., and uh, respond to public consultations. These steps apply to big market players as well as to smaller and less sophisticated market participants. At the end of the day, the success of Aonia transition and more generally of your benchmark reform depends on every user. I hope that uh, we can achieve progress on all three fronts uh, swiftly and I very much uh, trust this uh, event today to be a, an important uh, step uh, in that direction. Let me thank everyone involved in the organization of today's event. Uh, I would like to particularly uh, thank the chair uh, of the working group, Stephen, uh, and also take the opportunity to uh, pay tribute to the work done by Co Timmermans as the inaugural chair of this uh, working group. Also, uh, I would like to thank the work done by your team, Stephen, uh, which has been really pivotal uh, in, the, in the work of the, of the working group, uh, and I would like to thank uh, all the speakers. I'm sure that today's event will be a success and useful for all of us. And without uh, due delay, I uh, hand the floor to Stephen.